All right, this belt is shot. It's just getting in the way, so I'll snip it off. Let's get a light down in there and see if that's a set screw or not. I don't see a screw in there. I don't see any threads on the side, so that may just be an oil hole. But I don't see this turning, so there might be a wick in there or something. We'll figure that out. It looks like everything comes out this way. So we need to get those set screws out. It looks like somebody's already got them backed out, so maybe that's why this is chewed up. Maybe somebody has tried already unsuccessfully to get this thing apart. But I'll go get some Allen wrenches real quick. All right, I lucked out. I did some uh, cross-referencing on old woodworking machinery and uh, vintagemachinery.org. And this uh, Duro Tools is the manufacturer. The um, the badge, uh, the Montgomery Board uh, Ward badge that starts with um, yeah, 74. That's the uh, the year of manufacture in reverse. So it's a 1947 model FD. Um, Foxtrot Delta uh, indicates it's uh, manufactured by Duro. And I don't have an exact match for um, the model number uh, in the Duro catalog. But this is constructed, this one's for a 14 inch lathe. I think this one's a 13. Uh, this is a 14 by 38. I think this is a 13 by uh, 36. Um, him, I need to get the tape measure out, but anyway, um, very simu similar manufacturer. You can see. Uh, I like the fact they have the hand wheels. I might be able to uh, fabricate something like that or adapt something that I own. Um, that would make it really cool. And see, yeah, this for this bigger lead, they have number two Morse taper, so it's not going to be exactly the same. However. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to know was which way do I drive this thing if I start getting, you know, taking the brute force to it. And it does look like uh, when you read the instructions, you basically are just supposed to remove the screws that I did for this retaining faceplate, um, remove the screws holding the pulley, and then you drive it out this way. Um, so I'm going to, you know, apply some gentle persuasion. I just want to make sure I was pushing in the right direction. Um, but the main problem is, of course, this, uh, it's the, the pulley itself is what's stuck, and I hope I can do this without breaking it. I might ought to put it on the press, um, but, uh, yeah, we'll do that if it comes to it. But right now, uh, one thing I want to do is I'm just going to take some emery cloth and try to clean up some of where somebody's been there with a, um, pipe wrench or something and chewed it up a little bit. I just want to take down the high spot. In fact, I might do this with a file rather than emery cloth. I'm not sure. Uh, and I just want to take down the high spot so when it goes through this, it's an oil light bearing. Uh, just want to make sure that I'm not uh, driving that gnarly mess through the oil light bearing uh, when I do eventually break this thing loose. And I'll spray some PB Blaster or um, whatever I got down in here. Uh, hopefully, maybe that'll uh, help it a little bit to uh, to loosen up. We'll see. See the uh, like grooving on that shaft. This here's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was not gonna. That wasn't coming out without a fight. So yeah, it's gonna need a bit new bearings and everything. Anyway, uh, I just gotta get it off this last little bit here. Um, and it's nothing but the pulley holding now. Well, it fought me every step of the way. There it is. 
Yeah, that got gnarled up. So these sets, these two set screws, are supposed to rest on these two flats. Somehow that got off. This mess happened. That got the whole thing bound up in there. Somebody came along with a pipe wrench or channel locks or something and gnarled this all up. This uh, oil light bearing is supposed to be a nice fit on here and it's not right now. That's telling me that this is bad. I mean, that you know, even with my little bit of filing I did, I did not get that straightened out. So, uh, yeah, these uh, threads right here could stand some cleaning up, but otherwise they look very good. One, yeah, two spots there and there. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this piece uh, for me to remake, because it's got a Morse taper one on that end, and I think that's straight through on this end. I thought it might have a morse taper here for mounting a buffing wheel or something, but no. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm sure if I were Adam Booth, I would just say, "Ah, oh, screw it, I'm going to remake one of these," and I'd uh, I'd whip it out real quick. But that's that's some pretty uh, heavy machining for me. Uh, you know, to, I'm not all that good at single point threading, um, and the morse taper itself uh, would present an issue. So. Uh, I am going to go with cleaning it up. I don't think I have a Morse 1 reamer. Looks like I need to get one. Because uh, uh, yeah, in addition to cleaning that up, I will want that Morse taper good and solid. And then I will just clean this, clean this, get it to where it's a good fit for this. And, and it, I'll, I'll also try to source one of these. Not surprise me. There should be a hole in this. Um, so that when someone puts some oil here, I guarantee if I get a toothpick or something, that should go straight through. That should allow oil to get down into here, and then that oil will um, float inside of the So this may or may not be a, a good uh, piece still. But this bearing is definitely shot. So we'll get a new bearing. Investigate this, clean this, and then everything should go back together. Also, there's supposed to be a fiber washer up in between these two and it looks like that's gone so uh, we'll figure that out as well. And I'm going to give these guys a go in the parts cleaner. This has it's a mixture of grease and fine sawdust and stuff so it'll be fun to see what that thing can do. I'm, I'm only using you know purple power inside the thing so it's not like a carb cleaner or anything. And I'll do a little free soaking here. And we'll see what it does. It'll be a good little test. Well, there you go. threads are, are cleaned out well. I like that. Whatever this gunk was that was down in there is not completely cleaned out. This stuff looks like it would rinse off pretty easily now. Yeah. I think it's mostly okay. What that coating was that was on this aluminum was it painted? I guess this thing was painted at one time. I can't imagine why. Is that what that looks like to you? This right here? That looks like paint. Why in the world would somebody paint? I think uh 
I don't think that was from the factory that way. I guess I could be wrong. All right, so there's a lot of places on here that need some cleanup. The most, the least damage end seems to be down here. This will slide into a three-quarter collet with no resistance up until, hang on. I'm not feeling anything right there, but I think I am going to go ahead and hit that with a file. And then I'm going to polish this. I think that's just... And I've, I've already run this through the ultrasonic cleaner. I think there's actually a little bit of rust, and then there's a little ding right there that I might hit with a file. And then, once I choke on up to this point, this I'm actually going to be running a um, <clears throat> a cutter across to uh, to knock that down, because that's a, a lot of interference right there. And then up here, it looks to me, these are there's two of these lines that are exactly 180 degrees out. So I think that those were factory that were put in there, and I think that's where the um, <clears throat> pulley is supposed to stop on that and then, you know, tighten down into here, and I think that's where you get that distance. Uh, this part here, I will just polish... Um, you know, this has been through the ultrasonic already, and I don't know why some of this didn't clean off, unless it's got like a rust component. Um, but I will just polish that. I don't want to change the uh, diameter at all. This rides in the uh, um, oil light bearing. And then back here, I am going to clean this up. I will probably create a shoulder about right here, and I'm just going to make it clean. And then I think uh, later I will... Uh, put a couple of flats so that in the future nobody will be tempted to put a wrench on like they did here. And once all that's done I hope it'll all function correctly. Uh, so we shall see. And I'm going to be very careful not to be in any way in any sort of situation that I could get wrapped around. So I'm just going to be resting on the top here and if this thing grabs for any reason, it's gone. I'm not I'm not hanging on to it. Got no gloves on. Removing jewelry. So. so I think I'll run this in reverse. So I think I'll file that. Hmm, I think I already came up over that other part that I wanted to file. Alright, and uh, I think while I've got it running, while I've got this out, I'm going to go ahead and polish this part right here.
still a little bit of stuff there. And I think that was some corrosion. At some point or another, this thing um, must have sat. And some moisture must have gotten in there. And it must have had a little bit of corrosion. Alright. Good enough. So, yeah, I'm going to file that a little bit. Then, uh, Choke up on it a little bit more and start working on this area. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be protruding at all. I think that's okay. This part here, on the other hand, is protruding just a little bit. And then this is bad. deep.
I think that'll do all right. Spent a little bit of time last weekend repurposing this arm. Uh, it was part of a um, a monitor stand kind of a deal, and now it uh, gives me the ability to get better lathe shots without the shaky cam that I've had in the past.